Good morning, beloved. If we haven't met before, my name is Nathan Lonsdale Bledsoe. I'm the senior pastor here at St. Stephen's United Methodist Church, and I want to welcome you to worship this morning. We're right in the middle of a six-week series called Shalom, where we're looking at the peace and love that people are offered through Jesus, specifically through the texts in the book of Galatians. So we're looking at Paul's letter to the Galatians, and each week looking at a different chapter. This week we're going to look at chapter 3, which includes my absolute favorite verse in the entire New Testament, uh, in which Paul reminds us that we are all one, in spite of any divisions the world tries to put upon us in the eyes of Jesus. And we'll be talking about what that means to us and how we live into that better as followers of Jesus. I hope you find it to be interesting and engaging this morning. Uh, we really want to say a word of welcome to everyone worshiping with us, especially those worshiping with us for the first time or the first time after a while. You are a wonderful part of this community, and our worship is richer and better because you're a part of it. Um, as part of our worship life together, because at St. Stephen's we believe that worship connects us with God and with each other, we would invite for you to do a couple of things to further ground you in the worship experience and help us to celebrate that you're here. Uh, the first of those things is to sign in for us on our digital sign-in pads. The link is on the screen for you. It takes just a second for your household to sign in so we can celebrate that you're worshiping with us this morning and we can help make sure we're connecting with folks who connect with us. The second thing is that there is a digital bulletin available for you to download. You can print it if you're the paper type. You can follow along on your phone while you stream worship on your television or computer screen, if that's what you do. Um, and that link is also on the screen. It's got a detailed list of the order of service, as well as some information about some of the announcements and things that we'll be doing as we go forward this week. Hope you'll find that to be a helpful resource too. Um, as our prelude prays, <laughs> excuse me, as our prelude plays, tongue twister, uh, I invite you to center yourself and prepare your heart for worship. Uh, maybe use your phone to send a text message to a friend or two and pass the peace with them virtually. Let them know that you're worshiping this morning and that you're thinking about them. Maybe just sit and be still and quiet and prepare your heart for worship this morning. Whoever you are and wherever you are, you are welcome in the house of the Lord. Come, let us worship God together.
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship from Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make his no deeds known to all the people. Pursue the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wondrous works he has done, all his marvelous works and the justice he declared. Pursue the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. You are the offspring of Abraham, his servant, and the children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Pursue the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. God remembers his covenant forever. The word he commanded to a thousand generations, which he made with Abraham, the solemn pledge he swore to Isaac. Pursue the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. God set it up as binding law for Jacob, as an eternal covenant for Israel, promising, I hereby give you the land of Canaan as your allotted inheritance. Pursue the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord. Dwell on all his wondrous works. Good morning, St. Stephen's family. It is always so good to be with you, to worship with you, to sing together with you, me from my sanctuary with you in your sanctuary. It is exciting for God to hear us sing in the great chorus of the people of faith. I am Susie Bird. I'm the pastor of music and worship here at St. Stephen's United Methodist Church. And I'm always excited to sing together, as you can see and hear. And we begin our journey this week with Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, number 127 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Join me in singing. affirm our faith with our St. Stephen's affirmation of faith. We believe in God who claims us as beloved children, whose love unites us when the world would divide us. We believe in Jesus Christ, our living Savior and example, whose love knows no bounds. We believe in the Holy Spirit who empowers and enables us to transform the world who speaks through the stories of scripture to transform our own stories. We believe in the church who is the body of Christ and does not belong to us, whose work cannot be contained by a building, 
we worship God together, proclaiming God's love for us and our love for God and each other. We act in God's name, knowing God is at work all around us, calling us to join in, claiming us all as beloved. Good morning, everybody. My name is Stephen Fisher. I'm the Family Ministries Director at St. Stephen's. This is my daughter, Rachel Fisher. She's the Assistant Family Ministries Director at St. Stephen's. And at this time, I'd like to have the children come a little bit closer to your screens and devices, but not too close, for our children's moment. Have you ever seen one of these? Uh, they may look a little different because they change the design every now and then, but this is a library card to the Houston Public Library System. And not that I want to ever endorse a product or a service here, but I'm going to change my mind and say you really should get a library card. Library cards are available for everybody who lives in the city of Houston, whether you are young or old, whether you're a boy or a girl, no matter who you are, where you came from, you can get a library card if you live in the city. And it's not just Houston. Most major cities or towns or counties have their own library systems and you can access their library systems if you get a library card. You get, with this card, you get all of the benefits and this just isn't books. You can get books, you can get music, you can get movies. If you need internet access, you can use the uh, computers that they have in person. They have the current magazines and newspapers you can read. And you can even get information about like how to fill out government forms and stuff when you're older. It's pretty awesome. One of the best part about it as well, it's free. And in fact, if you don't have a library card, most libraries will still let you go to the library and read a book while you're there. You just won't be able to take it home. It's all free. Huh. It's pretty awesome. There's something else which has a lot of benefits, which has a low bar for entry, which is also free. And that is being in God's family. Uh, scripture today comes from Galatians 3, and I'm just going to read a small section of it. This part of it is actually a lot of people's favorite uh, scripture in the Bible or quote in the Bible as Rachel tries to grab and rip the pages. I'm going to have to hold it way out in front of me like this. It's a bit of a weird angle, I'm sorry. Paul's writing to uh, the people who are forming the church in Galatia, and he says, But now that faith has come, we are no longer under custodian. You are all God's children through faith in Christ Jesus. All of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither, G, not neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now if you belong to Christ, then indeed you are Abraham's descendants, as according to his promise. Spelt out there. Kind of like those library card requirements, right? That... Anybody can be part of Abraham's heirs. Anybody can be part of God's chosen people. Anybody can be part of God's family if we have that faith in Jesus. It's available to all. Doesn't matter if you're old or young. Doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. Doesn't matter where you came from, what your name is, who you are. And just like the library card, you get all the benefits every single time that God has laid out a promise for us. And there are many, and they are awesome. They are yours if you choose to be a part of it. And that's all you have to do. You have to choose to be a part of it. You have to commit to believing and having faith in Jesus, commit to the promises and some of the rules that are set out in the Bible and to try and live the best life that you can. And when you fall short, you just have to ask and seek forgiveness. Not only do I recommend being part of a library system, not only do I recommend getting a library card, I can't help but recommend being a part of God's family. And your families, if you're watching this, are probably at least somewhat interested, but most likely part of God's family already. 
So ask them what it's like for them too. Ask anybody you see in the future when we're able to get back together who is in the church. What's it like? What's your decision? How does it feel to be part of God's family? As the months go on and we return to a normal life, hopefully at some point soon, I urge you, go to the library, read a book, rent a movie, get on the computer, hang out and just take in the sights, and also do the same with your Bible. Pick it up, look through it, read some of the amazing promises, find out some of the cool things that belong to you because you said to God, yes. Would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the invite to be a part of your family. Thank you for the access to all your promises and the love that you have for us. Thank you that for all of these things, the cost is free. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Have you ever seen a polar bear with money? I, I don't think I have. That's because they keep all of their money in a snowbank. Get it? Snowbank? It's been quite a week of crafts nights. And the designs that you come up with. I hope you've had a great week doing crafts with us. And uh, Nevis is gonna take the corner of the paper and you're gonna lift it up. And then it transfers the uh, color. Here's the flame. What? George is on fire! Oh no! Oh no! George! Oh no! Okay. Well, what do you think? George. Then you take the handle and you shake it. You see, will it stay together or will it fall down? Uh oh. What do you That's what makes the mechanism. And when you open that front plate, you should be able to see the characters inside. Like Ayla's got down there. Um, okay, this is the point where I need you to do a really big, loud rumble with your feet, like there's a big earthquake that's shaking the prison. And you can shake too on the camera because it's an earthquake and that's what it does and it's everywhere shaking and oh, what's happening? I guess we really couldn't say goodbye without playing our sneeze and freeze game one last time. I'm gonna get some cocoa. God bless you. Would you join me in prayer? Open our hearts and minds, O oh God, that in the reading of Scripture, and in this discussion of Scripture, we might learn more about you and about ourselves. That we might learn our place in making the world look the way you want it to look. And that we might feel your love afresh in our lives each and every day. Help us to tear down the divisions that humans make between one another so that we might live into Paul's articulation of the radical freedom and oneness that we experience in Jesus Christ. That we might make the world look as you want it to look. That we might live the kind of lives that you'd want us to live. 
love us and guide us and hold us and help us to know your peace when we are troubled and help us to know your troubling when we need to take another step. God, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 through 14. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk with me and be trustworthy. I will make a covenant between us and I will give you many, many descendants. Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, But me, my covenant is with you, and you will be the ancestor of many nations. And because I have made you the ancestor of many nations, your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham. I will make you very fertile. I will produce nations from you, and kings will come from you. I will set up my covenant with you and your descendants after you in every generation as an enduring covenant. I will be your God and your descendants, God, after you. I will give you and your descendants the land in which you are immigrants, the whole land of Canaan, as an enduring possession, and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants in every generation. This is my covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Circumcise every male. You must circumcise the flesh of your foreskins, and it will be a symbol of the covenant between us. On the eighth day after birth, every male in every generation must be circumcised, including those who are not your own children, those born in your household, and those purchased with silver from forefingers. Be sure you circumcise those born in your household and those purchased with your silver. Your flesh will embody my covenant as an enduring covenant. Any uncircumcised male whose flesh of his foreskin remains uncircumcised will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. And now from Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Before faith came, we were guarded under the law, locked up until faith that was coming would be revealed, so that the law became our custodian until Christ, so that we might be made righteous by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a custodian. You are all God's children through faith in Christ Jesus. All of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, if you belong to Christ, then indeed you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this service that we would be talking about my favorite verse of scripture, uh, at least my favorite verse from the New Testament. I also I'm pretty fond of Micah 6, 8 in the Old Testament, depending on when you ask me, I might say. Either one is my favorite verse, but in Galatians 3, uh, verse 28 says, There's neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And Paul says this at the end of a chapter in which he is clearly detailing for people how they have gotten so interested in the law and in the rules that they have lost sight of what it means to truly belong to Jesus Christ. Uh, and he makes his case not by refuting the witness of the Old Testament and the Hebrew Scriptures, but by demonstrating that we are a part of God's plan for salvation for human beings, that we are connected to God's love from before the law was ever created, that we are heirs to the promise through Abraham and connected to Jesus and connected to Abraham. And it is through faith in Jesus that we are reminded that God's love for people is not based on the rule book or the laws or the divisions that we make or the purity codes, but purely based on God's love for us and God's desire to be in relationship with us. 
And God made that promise to Abraham before there was any physical sign of the covenant. And God broadened that promise to include us through the work of Jesus Christ, through his life and death and resurrection. I find this to be an incredibly powerful passage of scripture because it is a reminder of the depth and breadth of the love of God and how much God wants to share that love with all of us. <clears throat> I also find it to be an incredibly powerful and important and meaningful piece of scripture because it has within it a deep-seated challenge to all of us who seek to follow Jesus with our lives. Uh, because you see, friends, um, as wide a gate as this passage seems to articulate, human beings and even the church of Jesus followers throughout time hasn't always done a good job of living into these ideals, and in fact has often done a flat-out terrible job of trying to be this sort of place and to be these sorts of people. Um, and I think some of it is describable through a relatively silly analogy that I will make for you. Um, so you may have noticed, even though usually I mix it up week to week where I set up a camera and record my segments of the worship service, that I'm sitting in the same place that I was sitting in last week, uh, which is the table where I almost always sit on first Sundays in this uh, COVID worship time uh, for celebrating communion because it's our dinner table that Sarah and I use when we're having a particularly nice meal or when we have people over. Remember when you used to have people over inside for dinner? Uh, anyways, but behind me is a big picture window. So I live in the St. Stephen's Parsonage, a house the church uh, has owned since 1969, and it's a beautiful house. And those of you who are particularly observant and have been worshiping with us for a while may have noticed that there are actually drapes in the windows here, which was not the case for the first several times that I sat in this spot. Or maybe you've seen this window behind me if you've been a part of a Zoom conversation on whether it was a virtual potluck or some other part of a you know, a Bible study or wherever it was that you encountered us. Maybe you've been to the parsonage and have noticed that that window was bare. So there's there's a story there. You know, Sarah and I have lived here for about three years. And when we moved into the parsonage, there were some very old, but still in pretty good shape and functioning all right, um, even if the style was a little bit dated, custom drapes, because it's a very odd shape window with the ceiling there that you've got to mount the uh, bars to uh, for hanging curtains. I learned a lot about curtains over the course of this process, let me tell you. Um, and they looked fine, and they did the job the curtains are supposed to do, and we felt like they were more than adequate. And so they stayed up for quite a while, uh, and then a thing happened. So one of the funny things about a big picture window in the front of your house is when you have dogs, it becomes a favorite place for them to run to protect their domain. Uh, and at all hours of the day and night, um, our dogs might be found running right past this table up to this window to see who's walking by in their yard and or who's delivering the mail or dropping a package off. And um, they also like to chase the squirrels through the glass and all of those sorts of things. And it didn't take them long with those uh, old curtains that had been hanging for, again, many years to shred them to pieces at the bottom. And they really looked very ratty. Uh, and at that point, um, a church member uh, made the offer that she said, you know, these, these drapes are really terrible at this point, and you should have some that you actually like. So um, I'm going to make a donation uh, to the church to take care of the parsonage, because windows need to have appropriate window coverings. And you and Sarah, don't go crazy and pick out something outrageously expensive, but go get what you want to actually have hanging in the window in your house, and we'll let you hang them up. And it's, you know, no cost to you. Go ahead and take care of that. Uh, and we said, great, that is so generous, and went and did some research and found some uh, drapes that we liked and figured out what kind of bar they would need to have uh, and went ahead and ordered the stuff to get them done. Um, in the meantime, the old drapes, um, when this room flooded as a result of a squirrel saga that I don't have time to get into today. Um, that was the nail in the coffin for those, and they had to come down because they were just too gross to even hang anymore. Uh, but we had ordered, like I said, the new drapes, and this 
that ordering was probably eight or so months after we moved into this house. Uh, and we were really, really excited about the possibility of hanging out the window coverings that we wanted in this room uh, to match the colors and everything else. And they sat in the window for the drapes sitting in their packaging and over here on the side of the wall um, for the curtain rod for over two years, I think, um, just sitting there. And they just sat there because even though we really knew what we wanted to do, and we wanted to have these nice drapes up, um, I didn't actually do anything about it. See, I didn't do the work necessary to realize the promise that was paid for, that I got um, offered as a gift that didn't cost me anything to do, that was really a wonderful thing that we wanted to have happen, that we believed was the right thing, just didn't do it. Um, until finally, I did what I needed to do to get the drapes hung, uh, and lo and behold, wasn't that hard, didn't take that long, only had one night staying up later than I should have, playing with power tools to put them in, which was kind of fun. And now, if we ever want privacy in this room, we can just close the drapes. So I say that because I think it connects directly, and it's a fairly silly example, but bear with me here, to what is asked of us in this promise in Galatians 3.28. Because I think that it is easy for us to say, well, if Scripture says that there's neither Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free, male nor female, but we are all one in Christ Jesus, then that's the way it is in God's eyes, and that's just the way it is, and that settles it. But beloved, our world doesn't actually look like that. We can't just say that because I believe this, because my scripture says it, all of these divisions that the world has made and have been so good at making are just gone because I don't want them to exist anymore. We actually have to do the work to make that the case. That our scriptures ask of us to make the world look the way Jesus wants us, wants it to look. That a huge part of the biblical witness is not just heaven as a place that we go someday, but bringing heaven to earth. Creating the kind of world that we're proud to leave to our children and our grandchildren. Creating the kind of world where people independent of the color of their skin or their gender or who they are in relationship with or any of the other things that we use to put up barriers and boundaries are fully accepted in the life of the church and in the life of our society. And Christians are called to work as hard as we can to make those dreams real. It took the church and many churches still aren't there, an awfully long time to realize that pulpits could be filled by women as well as they could be filled by men, and that's just in terms of policy. Our United Methodist Church didn't make that change until the middle of the 20th century, and still, if you look at the list of the largest churches in United Methodism, whether we're talking about this part of the country or we're talking about nationwide or even globally, almost all of them are filled by male pastors still. Female pastors have uh, smaller appointments, have lower salaries, have a lower number as a percentage of the population. Um, if you look at the salaries and uh, opportunities for pastors who are parts of different racial minorities, you will also see disparities. And that's just within the church. The world around us has shown us that equality is far from guaranteed in our societies, even if we think as individuals that it ought to be the case that everyone has a fair shake and a fair chance. So what I'm saying is there is an incredible gift offered to us through Jesus Christ that we might all experience God's love no matter who we are, no matter what we look like, no matter what the backstory of our family is, 
no matter what any of the barriers to us might be, but that we are all called in living into that kind of relationship with God to look around us and see what we might do to make the world look more the way God wants it to look. Because just because we bought the curtain rod doesn't mean we've actually hung up the drapes yet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now the time has come for us to respond to God's word and God's love and trust with our gifts. The gifts that have already been given to us so that we may gift. Um, this past week we had our first virtual vacation Bible school and it was an incredible experience as I can attest to and it was also my first VBS with St. Stephen's and it was just wonderful how many of you have given your time and your uh, skills and your gifts uh, to this particular ministry and I want to especially give thanks for our Family Ministries Director, Stephen Fisher, who has spent countless hours in creating this VBS experience for all of us. May God always be uh, in these things as we give our gifts now. Gracious God, we give you thanks for that, what you have blessed us with. Help us to be in service for you and your people with everything that you have gifted us with. I pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord we come to the end of our service, I want to share a few things that are going on at St. Stephen's United Methodist Church and its surrounding community. On August the 30th, that's a Sunday, uh, we will be having Messy Church following right the 11 o'clock service, and Messy Church will be on Zoom. And so that's new, and I want to invite you to be part of it. Everyone is welcome. Uh, we're also on that day, we'll have the blessing of the backpacks and teacher bags. We will say prayers over teachers, students, administrators, and parents, as we all need prayers in this time of pandemic. Um, we will be making backpack tags, and you may collect those sometime before the 30th, and we will let you know when that will be. 
This coming weekend, on the 14th and 15th, the Texas Annual Conference will have its conference where pastors, clergy, and laity will gather together and uh, recap the past year and make decisions for the upcoming year. Um, our Pastor Nathan, myself, and Family Ministries Director Stephen will be partic participating in this conference. If you have any questions during that time and you are in need for us, please contact Mary Ellen and she will get with us and forward your message. Uh, Furlough Kitchen, the wonderful ministry that uh, serves our community and those are in need right now. Um, is always interested in volunteers. If you are interested in that, contact Pastor Nathan. His contact details are in the bulletin. And I wish you a wonderful, blessed week. As we prepare to sing our final hymn and go out into the world, I just want you to know the hope and promise in this verse and in this passage of scripture is not lost on me and should not be lost on you. No matter who you are, no matter what the world says about you, no matter what barriers you have faced in your life, you are loved by God and you are loved by Jesus and you are offered eternal hope and promise through that love. So go out into the world knowing that you are one in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. As we come to the close of our service today, I want to invite you one more time to join me in singing. So I chose a hymn that actually I wasn't that familiar with. It's called In Christ There Is No East or West is number 548 in our United Methodist Hymnal. And as you sing it, I bet you will be reminded of the scripture text that we read and that Pastor Nathan uh, preached on today. Um, I bet it will sound familiar. It is always good to sing with you. Have a wonderful week and go with God. Please stop.